Hey, Shalom, Shalom. I'm going to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechal Kadash. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechal Kadash, Barak Atham. Call all, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechal Kadash, which means all praise, call halal, which means all praise, Yahweh, which is the Most High, Bahashem in the name, uh, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, which is the Son, which is mean he's the uh he is salvation and Yahweh means he's to be. Okay? Um Bashem, of course in the name, Racha Kodash is the Holy Spirit. Okay? So what we're saying is all praise to the most high in the name of Yahweh Shai in the Holy Spirit. Or in the name of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And um you no know, I say Brakata, I'm just saying you know, the most high in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit bless you. Okay. Uh, this lesson we're going over. Uh, this is a GMS PNC uh, prophecies and current events. All right, and uh, we're going to go over this uh, this Ring of Fire. Uh, I'll say, uh, I believe it's a lunar. No, it's a solar eclipse. Um, where the the moon is the furthest uh, furthest away from the Earth. Uh, lining itself up with the sun, um, which creates a ring around the uh, around the sun, or within the sun, and the and the sun creates a ring around the moon. Okay, which uh, makes it uh, a fire ring. Now this uh, solar the solar eclipse can only be seen pretty much from Chicago on up. So nothing below, pretty much Ohio. You know, um, and nothing west of, you know, Illinois or Iowa, you know, um, so a north northeast of that, you know, the center spot is Canada, um, and I believe um, sunset, sunrise is the center spot. Of, it starts the center spot is Canada, and sunset ends in Russia. Okay, uh, so. Let's get into some precepts to pretty much support uh, what's going on here. All right. So we're going to start off with Genesis chapter 1, verse 13. It says, In the evening and the morning were the third day. And Yahweh said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Okay. So it says, you know, um, that. It says, um, and let them be for the lights, the lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So, you know, um, once you read, read on down, you know, it says the greater light. Matter of fact, I'll get it just so we can, um, have it fluent. Okay. It says in, uh, verse 16, it says, and Yahweh made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser right light. To rule the night, he made the stars also, and and um and Yahweh set them in the firmament of the heaven to light um so like it to light upon the earth, and to rule over the earth and over the night and to divide the light from darkness, and Yahweh saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, so this is you know the Most High is pretty much letting you know that the the sun, the moon, and the stars. Are not only to illuminate the sky, but also they give signs, such as solar eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse, um, certain um, signs, uh, lineups of astrology and things like that. You know, because astrology, it started off as a right hand deal, but everything has a left hand side, like the scriptures say. Um, you know, uh, the law is good, a man uses it lawfully. It also says, uh, 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 you know, to the evil, there is nothing good. You know, um, for the wicked, with um, things created for the days of evil. So, you know, they pretty much can take anything that's positive and turn it into a negative. You know, including the Bible in itself. You know, but uh, that's for a different subject for a different time. All right. So let's get back to these scriptures. All right. So, let's see here. I want to get this scripture. I didn't have it, but. Let's get it. Let's 
Salak here. I, I had to um, look it up real quick. So, um, we're going to go into Sirach, uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 43 um, and 7. It says, Salak, you will start at 6. It says, He made the moon also to serve in a season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Okay, what what declaration of times? Hey, in this time is the second coming of Yahweh Shai. Okay, uh, and a sign of a, of the world because everybody can see it for the most part. All right, everybody knows what's going on. Even if you're not able to see it, we still know via through the unicorn. Okay, it says from the moon is the sign of feast, a light that that decreaseth in her perfection. Yeah, because it's a sign of feast. Um, Mainly, what's going on right now? What 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 day that moon comes on? It's a new moon, which is the new month. Okay, it says the the month is called after her name. Okay, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being in, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So as you see, yeah, the month is called after her name, not the Gregorian calendar where you got January, February, March, April, May, even. With using the Hebrew calendar, it it does go. Um, the months' names are existing, you know, uh, like you know a month of Abib and you know the you know things like that. But uh, that's applicable to the moon. Okay, every time a new moon comes, that's a new month. Okay, and the scriptures prove that it's not you know Friday, Saturday, or Saturday is whatever, or Sunday or whatever. All right. The seventh day is the seventh day after the new moon. All right, so you go new moon one two three four five six Sabbath one two three four five six Sabbath, not Friday through Sunday. Okay, or however people want to start it. If you want to start Sunday through Saturday, it don't matter. That's not what it is. All right, you have to go according to the moon. Now the new moon will land on a day, obviously, you know, but. Uh, case in point the Shabbat um, the Shabbat will land on uh, um, what's the Shabbat now you know Salakis Shabbat Shalom by the way which is Tuesday uh, Tuesday night sundown to Wednesday sundown now the the new moon comes in on what Thursday sundown all right and Thursday morning is going to be the time that that new moon is going to come into fruition via the eclipse okay so right now the the shabbat starts at started tuesday night and it goes into wednesday night the new moon comes in wednesday night and then uh ends thursday night now the new moon is already going to come in so once it hit that morning when the sun rises, they will merge because they will be lined up, of course, de dealing with solar eclipse. Uh, that will be that ring of fire, which will bring in the new month. OK, if that's not a sign for you, I don't, you know, I don't know what is, you know, and uh, the main thing is we, let's get to the scriptures and, and prove, you know, as to why it's of importance. We're going to go to Luke 21 and 22. It says, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck um, in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon, his pe uh, wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the, by the sword, it's like by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captives into all nations. All right, and that's talking about us, you know, being, you know, scattered, okay? Because Israelites were scattered abroad and mainly took, took it into cargo slavery. And shall be led away captives into all nations, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, that part is talking about trodden down of the Gentiles. You got, you know, the Palestinians and uh, the so-called Israelis which are the uh, uh, Falasha Jews or fake Jews, okay? They are in that land 
and the Gentiles are pretty much going to try them down, which is talking about Felicia or the Palestinians. Okay, it says, and they shall fall by the um, Salakia, verse 25, and says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they uh, see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Alright, so is this going to happen simultaneously? No, everything is a build-up, everything is a process. Just like the, the new moon in the, in the eclipse has happened in a day, but the uh, uh, the Palestinians and uh, Israelis going to war that uh, or bombing each other, that happened, you know, a few weeks ago. Okay, so it's it's a build up, and there's going to be more going on. Okay, because ultimately that was just a tremor. You know what I'm saying? You can say because ultimately Iran is going to um get busy into that situation. Uh, you know, you can say Iraq. All the all the uh pretty much Arab nations are going to get busy pursuing to Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. Um, the Carmanians raging against the uh, uh against the Assyrians. Okay. It says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your eyes, lift up your heads, for your redemption draw up nigh. Yeah, because all this, the Most High is an incredible chess player, man. Um, they kicked out the the uh, Falasha Jews, which is so-called Israelis, a Jewish people. They kicked out the actual Israelites, even though um, it was off for them to go into that land. The Lord, the Lord provided them an avenue to get out, so all that bombing can happen, and ultimately something, of course, more is going to happen to them. But they're they're pushing them out of their land. The Lord allowed that to happen, so they can pretty much be re, re, be re, um, be relocated to safety. Okay, so let's go into uh, uh, Isaiah chapter one verse seven. It says, "Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire." Your land, strangers, devour it in your presence. And it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Yeah, because they're in our land right now. And look at the land. The land is desolate. It's, it's fruitless. You know, um, and I'm talking about basically things growing. You know, uh, that land is, is a barren land when it comes to uh, nutrition and uh, uh, and growth, which that land is was known as the Fertile Crescent. You know, but now nothing can grow there. Okay. Without, you know, they have to ship uh, uh, plants and things in there to, to uh, encourage growth. They have to get money donated to them from different countries every year, okay, for help, okay. And that's that's a big difference between us being in land and, they, and them giving us, you know, uh, 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 um, resources via through tights. You know, they, they need it. We When we get into the land, we're not going to need it, okay. Uh, we're going to go to Psalms 6, uh, chapter 60, verse 8. It says, Moab is my wash pot. Over Edom will I cast cast out my shoe. Okay? We already know who Moab is, which is today's Chinese. And uh, you could say, and they, there's a lot of turmoil going, especially dealing with when you're involved in Russia and, and, and China, uh, which Russia goes back to Gog and Magog, you know, and... Uh, they're pretty much, you know, um, always doing business with each other. Russia and China are always doing business with each other. And the business is normally opposed to the American dollar via through the oil or whatever. Okay. And uh, China is, is definitely um, one of the largest armies. And they're building up the army to, they believe that they're going to be the next superpower in themselves. Okay. It says, um. Uh, Going back to Psalms chapter 60, okay, it says, Triumph thou because of me, who will bring me into the strong city, who will lead me into Edom, okay? For those of you think that, you know, Edom gets a pass or Edom won't, nothing won't happen to them, why is the Lord prophesying and then he just cancel all prophecies and then let them in and then, you know, that's not, the Lord said his word comes comes not back unto him void, man. 
All right. And he and he prophesied the destruction of Edom via through the book of Obadiah specifically. You got Ezekiel constantly. And all of a sudden he just, oh, never mind. You know what I'm saying? No, that's not true. OK, the Lord ultimately is going to bring Edom down and utterly destroy him. OK, it says, uh, wilt not thou, O Yahweh, which has cast us off and thou, O Yahweh, which did us not go out with uh, with our armies, give us help from uh, from trouble. For vain is the help of man. Through Yahweh we shall do valiantly. For he uh, he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Okay, and he's using these other nations to do so. Okay, and uh, these scriptures were brought out to show you that via through this this uh, uh, eclipse, you know the solar the solar eclipse is a sign. That, you know, these things are not happening for nothing. All right. This is not a coincidence. And more is going to come to pass because ultimately it's going to lead to the second coming of Yahweh Shai. All right. And he's coming in his glory. And he's not going to meet us as a man as it is written. So, you know, yeah, this uh, I'll put a video up, video up also in post production explaining the, uh, the the solar eclipse. Um, and also, you know, hopefully you'll be edified and, you know, understanding the science behind it. Which is science is pretty much it just means knowledge, okay? Uh, so that's what I'm referring to when I say science, and uh, it give you give you a better grasp on you know how it works, okay? Just because you and I would like to say this as a footnote because Esau like to uh, you know use his sorcery. Just because you know how it works don't mean don't mean that 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 doesn't mean that that is denying that you how why you how shy. Is the orchestrator of that event okay so you know always keep in mind that just because you can understand anything the will of the most high is still coming to pass and it is ultimately the will of the most high all right because therefore he prophesied about it and said it was going to happen and it happens therefore he did it all right so with that being said i want to say call hello to you how about shimmy al shai by shimmy kakadash y'all by shimmy al shai by shimmy kakadash baka thumb the balance apostles who are elders who are well Bless the citations to you, brothers out there teaching and doing truth sincerity. Hey, shalom. After a quite spectacular supermoon, blood moon celestial on May 26th, part of the Earth are now expecting the first solar eclipse of 2021. An annular solar eclipse known as Ring of Fire will happen on June 10th. What is it and why is it called as Ring of Fire Eclipse and where are the best places to watch it? For answers to all these questions, please stay tuned until the end of this video. Hello everyone, this is Renuka and welcome back to our channel Explorer Happy and Leo. In today's video, we are going to see in detail about the solar eclipse which is on June 10th, 2021. Thursday morning June 10th makes the new moon which will eclipse the sun at 6.53 a.m. Eastern Time. On June 10th, the moon comes into Earth's elliptical orbit resulting in what is known as solar eclipse. But as the moon will be too far from the Earth to completely cover over the sun, something rare will happen. Before going into detail about Ring of Fire solar eclipse, I would like to briefly focus on what is meant by solar eclipse. A solar eclipse happens when moon crosses between the sun and the Earth. The moon partially or completely blocks the sun's light to the viewers on the part of Earth's surface, casting a shadow. Now, total solar eclipse versus partial solar eclipse. A total solar eclipse occurs when the moon, the sun and the Earth all lines up such that the moon completely blocks out the sun to viewers on part of Earth's surface. If the moon is not completely aligned with the orbit, Observers on the Earth face a partial solar eclipse. But if the Moon is the farthest from the Earth, known as Apogee, observers on the Earth could see a ring of fire eclipse. This celestial event is known as a very dramatic ring of fire annual solar eclipse. A stunning annulus ring appears around the Moon. Since this is not a total eclipse, the edges of the sun can still be visible around the moon as a glowing halo. From where to watch this Ring of Fire Solar Eclipse 2021? 
The June 10 ring of fire or annular solar eclipse will be visible from parts of Greenland, northeastern Canada, the North Pole and some parts of Russia. Meanwhile, Europe, North America, Asia, Arctic and Atlantic region will witness a partial solar eclipse. The eclipse begins before sunrise for every location in the United States. The further north you go in the United States, the most of a partially eclipsed sunrise you will see. Unfortunately, for those living in the southern and western United States, the eclipse will end before sunrise and so they will miss out on seeing the solar show. The center for attraction for this eclipse to watch is Canada. According to report, the eclipse will begin in Canada, Northern Ontario and on the north side of Lake Superior at sunrise. It will be visible at sunrise in Canada and at sunset in Siberia. The ring of fire will be visible in Canada for about 3 minutes. The full eclipse lasts about just 1 hour and 40 minutes and the annular ring of fire stage of the eclipse lasts a maximum of 3 minutes and 51 seconds. Here you can see name of countries where the solar eclipse is visible. The annular solar eclipse is visible, right? No matter at which part of the world you are, 